Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. Welcome to the Green Aqua Gallery. In this beginner's guide, I'm going to set up a 30 centimeter cube tank. This could be your first tank. Stay with me. This is a beautiful hobby on multiple levels, four levels actually. It is very creative. You can play around with live things, plants, fish, hardscape, water. You can create something, a picture that everybody likes. You, your visitors, your family. On the second level, you get to know your little creatures, underwater creatures, observe their work, underwater life. On the third level, you can just sit down, relax, disconnect from the everyday problems, which we all have nowadays. And on the fourth level, you can just maintain a tank and get into the flow feeling, get lost in your thoughts, disconnect again from the everyday life. So I've, I've never known anything that would be so chilling, so nicely disconnecting as a planted tank maintenance or a planted tank setup action would be. This is why I started the hobby when, well, actually I restarted the hobby when I grew up and uh, my daughter asked me, Dad, what kind of animals did you have in your childhood? And I told her that I used to have a lot of tanks, a lot of fish tanks, not planted tanks like today. And then obviously she wanted one. And I told her then, okay, let's get one. And that's how I got back into this hobby. But why I stood in it and what kept me in it was the constant mental refreshment that it gave me. My mission on this channel is to introduce you to the beautiful world of aquascaping. Planted tanks today differ a lot from the tanks that I had in my childhood. And I think the visual appeal of these tanks can be really strong. You can have a wide variety. This tank that we're building today is a very simple tank, but you can get from this level all the way to the level that we're at right now. And uh, if you watch our videos and if you're a long time viewer, thanks for the support first. Secondly, you will realize that, that you can get to a very, very creative level and you'll be able to do things that people look at and support it and they appraise it and it's something that will give you a lot of pleasure. Okay, so without further ado, let's start working and I'm gonna try to explain to you what this hobby is about. And I'm going to start with a budget because when you start this hobby, you probably don't want to spend as much money on it as you would on a new car or on a skiing trip to Austria or a, a sailing trip to Croatia or whatever, whatever. Oh, or by buying a very good camera so you can make nice photographs. But you can start with this tank and you can enjoy it. And I can build this. If you buy this whole thing from Green Aqua, you could get ready with around 200 euros. Obviously, you're not supposed to use as many plants. So for example, right here I have Anubias, which is a small epiphyte plant. Epiphyte plants grow on wood and rock. They don't need soil to, to thrive in the tank. And I'm using 10 pots of it. You're gonna be fine with only four pots of this plant. And then I've got three mosses here. I'm using the spiky moss. I'm gonna link all the details that, that I use here and then everything that I talk about here in the description. So you can check that out. Plants actually produce a lot more ammonia than fish would. Mom, fish excrements, etc., would produce a lot of rotting organic material. But rotting plant leaves, they would produce even more. So you want to get rid of that ammonia and you will need a relatively good filtration. But let's go back to the budget. So the smaller tank you build, the lower your budget will be. You can imagine a bigger tank, more materials, will cost more money, bigger filter, better light, more plants, more soil, more hardscape. Hardscape is the wood and the rocks that you will introduce in your planted tank. The concept of the planted tanks is coming from Mr. Takashi Amano, who was a Japanese master, and he came up with this hobby and built the first planted tanks and inspired many of us. Takashi Amano has imagined a full underwater world, complete with rocks, plants, fish. So it's not about one thing in particular, but it's about the unity um, ecosystem of it all. 
He also said that creating nature is the ultimate luxury, but in order to have a stable environment, you will need to support that environment with gear, not like in my childhood. I didn't, I, I used to have only internal filters for this tank. We're gonna have the Tidal 35, which is a hang-on filter. It's gonna sit on the back of the tank and it's gonna take the water out of the tank and send it back into the tank. And I'm going to use the Chihiros C3PO. No, <laughs> I'm gonna use the Chihiros C series desktop light, which is a 301, the C301 version. This is an LED light. It's not one of the strongest LED lights, but it comes at a better price because of that. I like to have good quality, but inexpensive things. So I always say that if you want to actually build a tank that is a lot less expensive than what we do here, you can always do that, but you will have to compromise. So this build is probably a good compromise between uh, price quality here. I'm not going to use the clay-based substrate that I always recommend to be used, but I'm going to use an inert substrate, a quartz pebbles basically from Denele, and I'm going to introduce that at the bottom of the tank to have something to put the rocks on and the black color of it will go well with the lava stones that I'm going to put in. Make sure that you have a nice thin layer at the front because if you have a thin layer at the front, you will be able to have a much higher looking tank. You need a lot more substrate in the back to be able to support these rocks. And then I'm introducing a main stone and then I'm going to continue and probably do a valley here. Every picture tells a story and I like to say that a lot. This is a black vinyl that I introduced and it needs to dry out a little bit now. We have a lot of videos on this channel about uh, nano tanks. We have a lot of sophisticated, bigger tank builds. You can check out those if you're interested in this hobby a little bit more. Ideally, you would want to elevate the background. If you have that and if you start planting on that, it's leaning towards you. So it will show you your plants much better. You don't want to just use one half of the tank, you want to use the top half as well. So the more you put on, the better it will be. Chihiros comes from China. It's a good quality light. It has many different light types. This one is one of the basic LEDs that they have. Talking about technology, I'm not going to use CO2 injection. You would ideally need CO2 underwater. Why? Because you don't have enough CO2 for the plants to photosynthesize. Plants are using the carbon from the air or the carbon from the water to build themselves. So this is why it's very important to use plants, but I'm going to talk about that later, that would survive without carbon dioxide injection. One CO2 system would probably cost more than, than the whole budget for this build. Is it on? Do you see the background that is dirty? This needs time to dry out, but it's gonna be completely black like here. So it's gonna be fine with time. As last step, you need to add some details. And for that, I'm going to use smaller rocks here and there in the foreground. I use all the rocks that I had available here. And I just selected them randomly. I did not have a pre-selection process. If you have the chance to go to a local fish shop, you could just look at tons of rocks if they have, or you could order from Green Aqua and tell us what kind of rocks you need, what is the size, how many of them, etc., etc. And And our team members will do their best to send you rocks that, that you would need. Also, lava stones are good because they are relatively light, so you don't have to spend so much money on rocks. One more thing, you should not be frustrated if you cannot do a similarly okay looking scape. As Dave Chow said in the most popular video on this channel, this should be about trial and error. The more tanks you rescape, the better you will be. So don't worry about the result of the first try, you will be better with time. I started from this. We are ready with the hardscape, let's move on onto building this tank. 
As I told you in the beginning, I'm only using epiphyte plants, and the biggest epiphyte plant that I'm using is a fern type. It's called the Microsorum vindelo. Oh, before we move on, I want to tell you a couple of things. First of all, what kind of plants should you buy? There are basically three or four types of plants. The first type is the potted plants. Actually, the windelo that I just introduced there was a potted plant. This comes from the nursery. Some of them are grown immersed. Some of them are grown submersed. The second type is the mosses that would come in a box. They could come in jelly as well. This is the third type. And this is a lab plant that comes in a jelly. The advantage of this is that it will stay longer. So after you bought the plants and you bring them home, you could wait two weeks before planting it. Don't put it in sunlight. Don't put it in heat. Don't put it in the fridge. You just keep it somewhere in the shadow with some light on it. You don't want to keep it in dark but it will grow like this for weeks, no problem. And then you just rinse off the jelly and you can use it. This comes in a rock wool. You have to remove the rock wool from it with a tweezer or something, and then you can just plant it afterwards. And the third one, the moss, you just take it out and you're ready. Substrate, how much substrate you need? If you are serious about the hobby, you should buy a base layer fertilizer substrate, which has a lot of nutrients, so the plant roots can go down there and pick up all the nutrients from it. Plants need nutrients. Epiphyte plants will take the nutrients from the water, so you have to apply some plant nutrients to the water. I'll talk about that later. Soil. There's a soil calculator on the Green Up website, so you just push in the dimensions of your tank in centimeters, 30, by 30 by say four and then you will have a uniform four centimeter of layer at the bottom if you want to tilt it you will need probably twice as much so you will have to calculate that but the website will also help in that oh and one more thing this is the one more thing video the lava stones they're stones but they can float up because they have a lot of air in them so it's a wise idea to soak them before you use them for a couple of days These plants need to be moist. You don't want them to dry out. That's not cool. One more thing. Let me show you how this whole thing looks without the black background. See how different this is? You can experiment. Just put in whatever you like. Just gonna introduce it here in the back to have some line that is closing it. So now we have plants that are high in the tank and they're gonna cover the whole height of the tank. Anubias is a big group or family of plants. They have a darker green leaves and they can be bigger or smaller. And um, for the nano tank, you obviously need the small ones. I'm just gonna introduce them in between the rocks here and there to add some detail. Cool. I've got a lot more. Sometimes your room would require for a tank to look good from two or maybe three sides. Let me show you how this looks from here. Okay, let's move on to the third type of plant that I'm going to use today. This is the Bucephalandra which is the second most popular foreground or mid-ground epiphyte type plant. The difference between the Anubias and the Bucephalandra is that Bucephalandra comes with a slightly different leaf structure and it has a lot of brownish types. There are many types of Bucephalandra, red, brown, wavy leaf, etc., etc. When you're building a tank, you can go, for reference, you can go on the Green Aqua website and you can sort the plants by needs by placement, by categories, by brands, whatever. 
So make sure that, that you choose the plants that would survive without CO2. All these plants that I'm using today here will survive without CO2. Again, this is not a sophisticated scape. I'm just trying to let you know what you can do with a few plants and a few rocks without any clay-based substrate. Ideally, if you have plants that would go into the substrate, you would want clay-based substrate. This is the ADA Small Tweezers Cost Saliver. You don't want to buy it if you just want to play with this hobby. But this is what I use. It's the best tool that I have. Okay, so I'm going to push it in, jiggle a little bit, open the tweezers a little bit, and then while I'm moving it, just taking it out. And that will sit in the soil. Now, you don't want epiphyte plants in the soil, so you don't want to do that with the Bucephalandra, but I'm going to keep it here for you to have an experiment anyway. I want to see if this survives in the inert soil. Last step, mosses. You have to be very careful with mosses because these can float everywhere if you start trimming them. So I would be very careful with using mosses, but you can give a lot of volume, plant volume to the tank while you do that. What you can do is actually take the moss, tie it to a small rock with some fishing net, for example, and then place that rock in the tank and you will have a little green island in the foreground somewhere. I'm going to use gel type super glue. Green Aqua has some cyanoacrylate based super glue. This is safe. So now I have something that would start the line. And what I can do is I'm going to apply some glue here, for example. I don't like the fact that it's too long, so I'm going to trim it, which is bad. I should have done that before I introduced it. Guys, when you start working, you lose track of time. I have no idea how much time we spent on this. I keep forgetting that I have cameras. It's like I'm talking by myself, it's crazy. This is the effect that aquariums have on you. And after one hour, the tank is ready. You can do this in 30 minutes. Quickly, if you don't like it, take it apart, do it again. Actually, if you see the glue, it's gonna be whitish underwater. That's not very beautiful. So I, what I do then is I take a small patch of moss, just put it together. I apply some glue on the moss and I put it underwater and I just put it on top of the glue that is visible and it's gonna cover it completely. You've got the matrix in it. If you leave the matrix in a bag, it's not gonna work. You don't want to use this without rinsing. Can you rinse it please? There's a pad at the bottom. So when the water first gets in, it will clog the pad within a couple of months. So you need to take the pad out from time to time. So let's see where we put this, because we actually need a lot of space and we didn't leave any space for that. I can even cover it a little bit. Thank you. The filter material is here. Just gonna put it there, lay it down. Okay, and then the top. Deal. Oh, and one more thing, actually four more things. Don't forget to use some mats below your tank because uneven surface can crack the bottom plate of the aquarium. Second, you don't need a skimmer for this tank because the uh, hang-on filter will actually stir the surface and move it enough so that you don't have some film on the top of the surface, which is a problem usually. So if you want to make sure and you have an internal filter, for example, it would be wiser to have a skimmer to clean the surface for the gas exchange, which is really important for the biology. Speaking of internal filters, if you want to save a little bit of money, you can get those. The problem with those is that they only have filter pads, basically sponges in them, and it's not a very efficient filter media, so I would not recommend it, I would not use it. What I would do, if I had good funds, I would use an external filter that has a big volume, that has good circulation, that has a lot of material for the filter bacteria to live on. 
You want to light your aquarium about eight hours per day. When is that eight hours? It can start in the afternoon if you want to enjoy the tank at night, or it can start in the morning, but then make sure to switch it off after eight hours. You don't want more light, you would stretch the biology too much if you'd have more than eight hours of lighting. That's it, if you want to have CO2, that should start two hours prior to the light and switch it off together with the lights, but that's deeper water. You don't introduce fish for the first couple of weeks. I would recommend that you wait at least three weeks because the filter will need to cycle. And now you're gonna see the images that we shot three weeks or four weeks after this day. Because we're gonna introduce the fish, you're gonna see what kind of fish we introduced in it. So you, what you will need in a couple of days is some basic fertilizer. We've got a fertilizing masterclass and, and all kind of information on fertilizing uh, here on this channel. And you will need some dechlorinator if you use tap water and it's full with chlorine because that would kill the bacteria in the filter, so you don't want that. Make sure that the filter bacteria will not get in contact with any, any chlorine. And then make sure that the temperature is fine. So if you want to have a thermometer, that's okay. But actually, if, if you mix the water to be room temperature, that's going to be fine as well. And if you want to have a betta fish in this tank, which is a really popular fish, my problem with that is that you will need a 28 degrees Celsius planted tank and you will be prone to algae a lot more than you would in, in 23, 24 degrees Celsius and we recommend that for all kinds of tanks. Also, if you have hard water, you can have some calcium residue on the glass, which is a problem. You can clean that with a mild acid, don't scratch the glass. Maintenance-wise, what you need to do is these are slow growing plants so you don't need to trim them so much make sure that you remove all the uh, excess moss that you trimmed make sure that you change the water regularly you need to change 50 percent of water every week so that's another thing that you have to take care of when you're new to the hobby you need to think about your water changes and maintenance regime because if it takes a lot of time you're gonna get bored after some time, you don't wanna do it, you're gonna skip it, and that's when you will start having algae. And I've got some algae guide videos here on the channel again. I hope that you'll find all of them here. I hope that you guys like the introductory type of video that we just made here. And um, welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. I hope that you're gonna enjoy it at least as much as I do, and it's gonna help you with your everyday chilling just as much as it helps me. This hobby changed my life. I used to be a TV director, our producer knows. Used to work with her a lot on, on big TV shows, bigger and smaller TV shows. And uh, it was very stressful. And when I got home, I wanted to do something that really replaced beer, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. Five years sober, baby, yeah! <laughs> All right, with that said, please don't forget to subscribe if you didn't do so yet. We'll see you next week. Hit that like button if you want to support the channel and bring this to a wider audience. Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. Next week on Green Aqua. I'm here today with Victor. He's back at the channel. You don't see him too much. Victor and Tommy build a classic nature aquarium hardscape for the huge 650 liter or 172 gallon aquascape.